Welcome to the Boulder Area Music Teachers Association's 35th Multiple Piano Festival. I'm Carol Wickham Revere, festival co-founder and this year's chairperson. One fall day in 1984, I got the idea for a multiple piano event when I walked into the newly renovated Chris Finger Pianos showroom. I saw against a brick wall on the far side of the room, seven grand pianos all with their lids up at the same angle and thought, what would those pianos sound like if they were all singing at once? Eric Bruner, a talented choral director who was moonlighting as a salesman, thought we should find out. Chris agreed. And the very next week, I presented the idea of a cooperative performance to our local piano teachers group. Laura Bonick agreed to co-chair our first festival with me, and off we went. Our first performance took place in Chris Finger Piano's showroom in November of 1985, with 80 pianists performing on nine grand pianos, conducted by Boulder Phil's then director and CU professor, Ozzy Lehnert. Although the players were not auditioned, we played to an enthusiastic standing room only audience. Tickets were $3 per person. The festival grew beyond our wildest dreams. Most of the past 34 festivals have included approximately two dozen pieces played by two to 300 pianists of all ages and abilities, including piano teachers, with up to 24 pianists at a time led by a conductor on a stage packed with 12 grand pianos with audiences of up to 800 people. Quite a spectacle. As we began preparation for this year's festival at about the same time as the lockdown, like so many performing arts organizations, we faced a new challenge. How could we keep this going in the time of COVID? As we wrestled with the idea, canceling just didn't seem to be an option. In addition to the musical skills the festival gives our students, music reading, ensemble playing, and a unique kind of accompanying, the festival also teaches invaluable life skills, such as active listening, taking responsibility for one's mistakes, and working toward a common goal or collaboration. During this time when we are so separated, it seemed more important than ever to provide an opportunity to connect. We also couldn't overlook the fact that the festival provides a powerful incentive to practice, and we certainly didn't want to miss out on that. And as it turns out, with technology, even though you can't sit on the same bench with your partner, you can still enjoy learning and performing piano duets. Rock icon John Bon Jovi said, if you can't do what you do, do what you can. Well, we hope to have 50 participants this year. Altogether, including teachers, we have 219, with alums joining us from places as far away as New York City. Thank you for watching, and please enjoy this year's Digital Multiple Piano Festival the result of our collective efforts to celebrate our glorious instrument and perform our chamber music for the piano together.
This upcoming song is the theme from Pirates of the Caribbean, an exciting movie series starring a mysterious pirate who gets in all sorts of trouble, Jack Sparrow. Everyone playing the song has practiced very hard, but I have one question. Are you ready, Scallywags? Noah, my parents are always putting limits on when I can do things. It's not fair. I know what you mean. They never let me do what I want. I mean, my parents give me limits on bedtime, when to take baths, when we get dessert, and when we get to play. You know, Vivian, of course they never give me a limit on practicing the piano. Well, Noah, 2020 has been such a crazy year. With all these things being cancelled. Yeah, but there's no limit on what we can do in the future. That's for sure. Now presenting... No Limits by Jennifer Eklund. Ready, Vivian? <laughs>
The elf is the greenest fan of Christmas. Christmas music brings us all together. It makes me happy. Nope, not today, elf. I'm not in the mood. Music, music, music. I'm getting bored of this every single year. Unless that changes. Wait a minute, Grinch. Are you trying to steal Christmas? Christmas is my favorite time of the year. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. Well, Grinch, since you don't like my type of music, what's your favorite song? Hmm, let's see here. How about your mean one, Mr. Grinch? Presenting your mean one, Mr. Grinch. Hi, my name is Adeline and my announcing partner is Emily. Um, and we're both seniors this year. This is my 10th year participating in MPF and this is Emily's 11th year. Adeline and I announced together many years ago and we are so grateful to have the opportunity to do it together once again in this crazy year. The next piece you'll hear is Homage to Thomas Campion by Jackson Berkey. Um, this piece was inspired by Campion's poem, View Me, Lord, A Work of Thine. He wrote this poem sometime between 1602 and 1620. Thomas Campion was an English composer, poet, and physician who composed most of his music for the lute. Contrary to the flute, a lute is a stringed instrument similar to a ukulele. We want to say a special thank you to this year's organizers of MPF. We are so grateful for their hours spent creating practice recordings, judging our entries, and editing this all together into what you see tonight. We hope you enjoy one of our final performances with MPF as we really enjoyed all of these years participating. Please enjoy Homage to Thomas Campion by Jackson Berkey.
<laughs> oh, why, hello there. I'm just singing Main Street Parade by Menly Bober. It's a great song for everyone in the world to learn. I just think. And I'm wearing a cap because the parade is going to start soon. Now I introduce you to Main Street Parade by Natalie Bober. My favorite thing about the multiple piano 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 festival is that it gives the kids a goal to work towards and it helps create teamwork because they know they're working with a partner even though they can't be with each other. And so they put in a lot of hours of work to make sure they didn't let down the team. That was cool. What about you, Kate? What would you say to someone new doing their first MPF? I would say I would just say, well, don't be afraid, and if you are, just say, piano, <laughs> piano, and be confident. Be confident, okay. Say piano and be confident. I have some advice. Wow. It is start recording your final auditions early. Yeah. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Michael Lee, and I'm going to announce the song called Midnight Horseman. This song is about a legendary horse named Midnight. He was found in 1916 on the Cottonwood Ranch in Alberta, Canada. When he was three years old, he was a cow horse. Two years later, he was a bucking horse. He was estimated to be around 20 years old. This song is composed by a music teacher named Millie Eben, who is still alive today. Please enjoy the show. Thank you. If I could be any flower in the world, I would choose to be a morning glory. It would be such a relaxing way to start the day by bringing joy and cheerfulness to those around you. I would choose to be a pink morning glory because, just like the next song we'll be playing, it represents peace and gentleness. While we play Morning Glory, written by Edwin McLean, imagine that you're a morning glory. 
dancing in the sunshine and bringing hope and kindness to all people. Oh, hello. I heard that if you play flute for a snake, it'll dance for you. I want to go work for my snake. Why are you dancing? Maybe if I play the piano, he'll dance. Introducing The Snake Charmer by Carol Mott. bears away it's throw cares away you know like be cheerful and grateful during the christmas season oh well that's a good thing because all those children are sure going to miss their favorite stuffed animals speaking of which i'm going to go check on something before the trash gets collected but first you can listen to ukrainian bell carol by jennifer eckland <laughs>
ever seen a sneaky fox do the boogie? Well, I haven't, but you're about to hear one. Sneaky Fox Boogie by Emily Lynn. Hi, my name is Tanya Weinberg, and I am proud to say that I was one of the few students to participate in the very first multiple piano festival back in 1985. It quickly became one of my favorite piano recitals of the year, marking the beginning of the holiday season and a fun way to spend time with fellow piano students. My kids have been playing piano now for quite a few years, and I had always hoped that they could participate in the festival, but we live in Denver and the drive just seemed a little bit too far to make rehearsal times. So I was super excited when I heard it was virtual this year and it would be easier to participate. It's been really fun listening to my kids practice together and having something to work towards during these times when life can get a little bit monotonous. Thank you to the festival committee for organizing the event this, week, this year. And I'm really hopeful that we will be able to join everyone in person um, in future years. Por Una Cabeza was written as a love song by Carlos Gardel and Alfredo Lepera. It is featured in the movie The Scent of a Woman, where the romance and emotion of the song is portrayed by a string ensemble as a blind man dances the tango with a woman. The inherent romance of the piece can be heard in the piano duet arrangement by Tal Zilber, which will be played for you today.
Queen in his gutter. Um, the song countdown races was written by Stephen Foster um, in 1815. It is a famous song. My great grandfather used to sing it to my mother when she was a little girl. I really hope you enjoy the performance of Camp Town Races. This piece that we are about to play is called Mansion Rag by Justin Levitt. Ragtime music gets its name from a music term called syncopation. Ragtime music in particular has the majority of its notes played on the offbeat, giving ragtime that ragged feel and therefore giving its name. I absolutely would not mind living in a mansion, even if it is ragged. The Moldau was composed in 1874 by Czech composer Bedrick Smenta. It is the second movement of a nationalistic symphonic poem, Ma Vlast. This piece depicts the journey of the river Moldau and was specifically meant to produce sounds of this great Bohemian river. Presenting the Moldau.
It's not simple. Life is really not simple. However, life is a gift. A precious and, well, the simple gift of life is really the most precious gift. So in this crazy time of COVID, let's renew and relax and appreciate life. Enjoy our next song called Simple Gifts. Hi, my name is Katherine Chandler and I am recording this from Manhattan in New York City and I was a student of Carol Wickham's for um, pretty much my entire life growing up um, from the time I was in first grade until I graduated from high school. I was in the first multiple piano festival when I believe I was in third grade and I designed the poster um, for my third multiple piano festival. Um, I have some of those in storage and I am very sorry that I wasn't able to procure one of those um, for this recording. I'm hoping that maybe I'll be able to find one for another year to share, um, ho hopefully the 40th. Welcome to this Frightful Night piece. It is composed by Melody Bobber. I hope you don't get too scared. Bye.
Yes, Talia? Who's someone you love? Well, my family, my dog, my piano teacher. Nice. Anyone else? Well, you and I have played at the Multiple Piano Festival for three years in a row now. So you're someone I love to play music with. Aw, thanks. Who's someone you love? While you're thinking about it, you can listen to Someone You Love by Louis Capaldi. Hey Eliana, I'm in the mood to listen to some music and dance. Me too, I've got the perfect song. Let me play it for you. No, that's boring. Okay, if you don't like that one, how about jazz? That's crazy. Who likes that kind of music? Do you like rock music? Because I've got a cool song you might like. Finally, you got it. Rock is my favorite kind of music. Now presenting... Rocking Around the Christmas Tree.
Alrighty, the next piece is Salad. You might be wondering, why would a composer name the piece Salad? Well, in the dictionary it says that a salad is a mixture, a cold dish, of raw and cooked vegetables. Rachel, often it's valid, not salad. I guess I've been out of school for so long, I just don't know how to read anymore. Anyways, everybody, hope you enjoy Pallid! It's Valid! Valid by Robert Vando! Hi, my name is Israel Miles. I played in the Multiple Piano Festival from the time I was seven or eight years old all the way through high school. And one of my favorite things about the festival is the sheer amount of pianists that you get to meet in addition to learning all sorts of songs that you'd never find yourself playing and you get to learn them all together. What comes to mind when you think of a waltz? Many would say a ballroom style dance that is in triple time. Usually these dances are uplifting and joyful. However, the masquerade waltz is different. It is known for being more intense with eerie, beautiful combined tragedy and hope mixed all throughout. An Armenian Russian composer named Kachaterian was asked to compose some incidental music for the play Masquerade in 1941. Kachaterian used one of the main character's lines as inspiration for the piece. The line goes, how beautiful the new waltz is, something between sorrow and joy gripped my heart. With great pleasure, I would now like to present The Waltz for Masquerade by Aram Kachaterian.
Gentlemen, we bring you Halloween Town by Aaron Gardner. The Dolly Suite is a collection of pieces for piano duet by Gabriel Fauré. They were written between 1893 and 1896 for Regina Helene Bardak, known to her family as Dolly, the young daughter of the singer Emma Bardak, with whom Fauré had a long-running affair. He would typically send the pieces of music in manuscript form to mark Dolly's birthdays and other special occasions. The best-known section of the suite, the Berceuse, has been arranged for several combinations of instruments over the years, but we will be performing it in its original form, the piano duet. The title literally means cradle song, and it was written to mark Dolly's first birthday. The adults and alumni of Multiple Piano Festival now present the lilting, relaxing lullaby, Bersus. Enjoy. <laughs>
So you folks in Newcastle, Moore, and Norman, uh, definitely Newcastle, <coughs> really perk up here. You need to make those pre preparations right now to get ready to go to that safe spot that is of reasonable, substantial safety. Okay? Hazel! There's a tornado coming. We need to get to our safe spot. Silas, it's not a tornado. It's Spanish Tornado by Walter and Kara Nuna. For anyone who's gotten to participate in multiple piano festival over the years and then has tried to describe it to other people, you probably share a similar experience with me that it's kind of hard to describe. Typically people respond with, wait, you're up on stage with how many pianos and, the, and you're all playing the same song, but you're a duet? They're very confused until they see it and they see the power of that many pianos being played at the same time. What I think is so cool as somebody who got to uh, participate in the festival for so many years is it has so many elements first you get to learn the piece the, the half of your piece on your own which is a fun thrill then you get to practice putting that together with your partner and perform that in any capacity that you want but then you get to take that piece and put it with 11 other pianos 22 other people and make this incredible orchestral festival that is really unlike anything else I'm incredibly grateful that I got to do it all of the years of my growing up, and now that I get to participate as an, as an alumni is incredibly special. And I feel incredibly proud of my mother for, for pioneering this festival and for being such an integral part of keeping it going all of these years. Must be J. 
Jingle Bells Duet Fantasy, arranged by Robert D. Vandal. This song will fill you with glee, which you clearly need, and it's been around since 1850. Okay, um, can I get closer here? Yeah, sure thing, I've had just for you. You look like you might need this. Alright, come on, let's go. It's starting to get to that time of year again where bells are ringing and snow is falling. You may even want to take a sleigh ride. The song Sleigh Ride is a popular song originally written in 1948 by Leroy Anderson that had lyrics added to it in 1950 by Mitchell Parrish. If you listen closely, you may even be able to hear the hooves of the horses. Please enjoy our version of Sleigh Ride arranged by Michael Edwards. After all, it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together.
In case you're wondering, as I was, if Mr. Holst, who wrote this year's teacher's piece, is the same Mr. Holst who wrote that well-known orchestral suite called The Planets. Well, he's not. That was Englishman Gustav, born in 1874. This is Danish composer Eduard, born three decades earlier in 1843. Our Mr. Holst immigrated to the United States in about 1874, the same year the other Mr. Holst was born and was active for the rest of his productive life in New York in both the music and theater communities. Playwright, actor, dancer, dance master, and composer, he wrote over 2,000 pieces of music. Scores for musical comedies, military band marches, and descriptive pieces of all kinds for piano, including this little gem, Shooting Stars Gallop, written for eight hands on two pianos. A gallop was originally a lively country dance introduced in the late 1820s in Paris and was the forerunner of the polka. An even livelier, faster version of the gallop was the can-can, developed in Paris around 1830. So help us out here. As we perform for you, see if you can imagine us all decked out in pantaloons, fishnet stockings, and multi-layered skirts covered with ruffles and frills as we kick and twirl and toss this stinking virus out of our lives. Shooting Stars Gallop by Edward Holst. <laughs> ¶¶